classic to modern Monster Arts to Mezco. Get all of your Godzilla and Kong figures at Big Bad Toy Store. The link in the description down below. Kaiju, Dragon Ball, Pokemon, and more. It's Steven's Toy Reviews. Hello there, collectors. It's Steven here. Happy New Year to you. I'm kicking off the 2019 review year with a review of a Godzilla figure from one of the most popular Godzilla movies in Japan in terms of ticket sales and attendance. King Kong vs. Godzilla is actually one of the most popular and a very limited release figure because it is a P. Bandai web exclusive. It is the SH Monster Arts Godzilla 1960. Two. That's right, fans have been clamoring for a new Showa figure, and Bandai was more than happy to give it to us. It's in a nice scale, the articulation isn't great, well, you know what, it just might, oh, wait a minute, it's 100 bucks, and they just announced a Godzilla figure for about 70 from the upcoming King of the Monsters movie? Hmm, I don't know, really dinks the old finger about this one. Is it worth the purchase? Well, let's take a look to see whether or not he's worth adding into your collection. Tapping Monster Master Yuji Sakai for the sculpt on this release, Bandai did a great job in terms of making sure the sculpted details would be handled fantastically. Whether or not it's going to be the accurately sculpted hands. Yes, that is true. The well-proportioned tail, the dorsal plates that look amazing, this figure drives sculpt home as being one of the better figures that's been sculpted in the line as of late. Hmm, I wonder what that says. Anyway, sculpt is one aspect of how the figure looks. The other one is the paint, and that is where this figure is going to be lacking. Why? Three issues, one subjective that I've not seen on all of the units that I've taken a look at, including mine, mine's fine, and two that are consistent issues. What am I talking about? Well, you already know what number one is, the eyes. As we take a closer look at Godzilla 1962's head, on mine, they're relatively fine. What they did here is they used translucent plastic with the pupil, well, the eye, essentially, on the translucent plastic with a nice yellow gold, which is also accurate, by the way, background for the overall coloration of Godzilla's eye. The way that this was done, the black paint, decal, whatever it is, casts a shadow into the eye, making the eyes look a bit off-center in some cases. In others, that black application, so this way they could really give you the full view of the eye, uh, yeah, the left side may be larger or smaller than the right, vice versa, and also, they may not be applied properly, so this way Godzilla may be looking in the correct direction with one eye, but in the other one, he's kind of wall-eyed, like literally looking at a wall, so... Yeah, he'll have eyes that are looking in two different directions. That's not accurate. That's not what the suit looked like. And uh, if, you, if you say that that's true, denial is not healthy, folks. You should see help for that. The mouth paint. The teeth look like bleh. Some of them have bleed over from the red gums. Others, black streaks on them. Others, chipped. Yeah, Bandai did not do a good job with the mouth. And considering that the likes of the SH Monster Arts Godzilla Jr. has a fine mouth, yeah, not really forgivable here. However, as we look down throughout the rest of the figure, we do see that Godzilla has slight, slight tones of a brownish red and green to him. Very cool. Just, oh, no, wait, Christmas has already passed. Anyway, the reason for this is that Bandai decided that they were going to make this Godzilla closer to his battle with Kong when he gets all dusty and dirty and he's all beaten up. Well, the problem there is they also use that as a cop-out to not paint the nails. All right, fine, there's a little bit of a brownish-reddish dry brushing, but to be honest with you, it's non-existent on mine's left hand, but it is on the right hand, and on the toenails, eh, it's kind of there. Yeah, instead of actually properly painting the nails, Ben and I just used a cop-out here. Not good. What is painted really well, though, would be the dorsal plates. And dare I say, these are the best looking dorsal plates in the line, bar none, to this day. They look almost as good as a prototype. A couple of small paint drips here and there, not really a big deal. They're super small. You're only really able to see it because of my lens extender here and the use of a macro lens and a couple of other pictures. But seriously, the dorsal plates, they look great. And not even the main row of dorsal plates even the side rows next to them, too. So when you take a look back at the Evangelion Godzilla, you gotta wonder exactly what Bandai was doing. And of course, the tail looks great as well. So all in all, for this figure, the sculpt is fantastically, awesomely amazing, but the paint ranges from either being 
super duper on point to prototype status to non-existent at all. All right, time to talk about the articulation here. And uh, overall, King Goji is kind of middle of the road. Nothing over the top fancy, like let's say an SH figure arts, but um, he can move. What do we have? Well, we do have a ball jointed jaw, so this way we can open and close his mouth, rock it around a little bit if for some reason you wanted to. And something that I've seen on some folks is that the tongue has been able to cock from side to side in some still pictures, but despite how much movement I have tried and how much force I've tried in there to get that tongue to move, it's just staying still. So I don't know if mine's a dud in that regard or uh, other folks had duds. Yeah. Anyway, the head plugs into the neck on a ball joint, so this way we can twist it and turn it from side to side, get them to look up and down. Not a whole lot. This is basically just sort of a joint to come in clutch to help you a little bit more when this joint can't exactly get to look over there. So this ball joint here allows Godzilla to really look down, which is actually more so straight. You're going to see another joint in action here in a second, and then we can get Godzilla to really look up. Want to look at that? Yeah, that's pretty cool. Now we do have uh, ball jointed shoulders, which allow you to twist and turn Godzilla's arms around from side to side, move them forward and back, up and down. Now uh, this joint, by the way, is uh, rather loose on mine. Yeah. So let's take a look inside here. You'll see real, real quick that uh, sometimes when you're moving out around the shoulders, they're going to bump into this portion of the neck sculpt on Godzilla. So just do keep that in mind. If you're getting a little resistance, maybe back off a little bit, try repositioning them. Now we do have bicep swivels, elbow hinges. Nope, around the elbow area, we just have ball joints. So this way we can move Godzilla's arms around in basically any direction. So it's kind of like the hinge and the swivel rolled into one. Then we do have ball jointed wrists. So we can spin Godzilla's hands around. Yeah, pretty cool. What is cool also is that these joints allow Godzilla to get in that pose where he's maybe getting ready to throw down with Kong, like he's getting ready to do a bear hug or something. And uh, if you're into stop motion, you can get him to do that clapping uh, motion that you saw in the movie. Uh, unfortunately, though, his hands can't touch from what I've been able to get anyway. Yeah. So moving on down, we do have this joint here, which is the waist joint, the ab crunch. Yeah, it's on a ball joint. And he can lean forward about that far. So when you push down all the joints for his neck, he can look down about that much. Create a gap. So if you hate gaps, you're going to hate this figure. And then uh, in terms of looking up, about that far. So he can rock and spin, twist and turn a little bit. Nothing over the top because we do have some uh, sculpt issues back here which prevent him from completely twisting. But that's okay. I mean, realistically speaking with all the other joints, Godzilla is definitely going to be able to look to his left and to his right, no problem. Now, moving on down here, interestingly enough, the thighs are sculpted in such a way that they hug the tail where it's connected into the body. Now, this is cool, but at the same time, if you're moving the hips around, you are going to notice some resistance, and uh, some poses are not necessarily going to be able to be had just because they kind of get stuck, and you can't really figure out ways to get around them without really finagling this figure. But we do have some decent range here. Then, moving on down... To the knees, we do have hinges, and then the knees plug into the thighs on ball joints. So that's pretty cool. We get some nice movement there. We can twist and turn the knees around. Always good to see. Then for the ankles, we do have ball joints, which allow us to spin the foot around real tight and get ankle rockers out of that. Now, for some other Godzillas previously released in the line, there has been a cut here that allows for another ball joint to be uh, there, not present on this Godzilla. So if you're used to that, it won't be here. Then we do have the tail. This is the last, and this is one of the coolest Monster Arts tails in the line so far. F starting here, we have ball joints all the way up to this portion of the sculpt. So you want Godzilla to touch his tail to his dorsal plates? Yep, you can do that. You want Godzilla to tuck his tail in like that and maybe fire a beam while he flies? He can do that. Yeah, the only downside is that this dorsal plate is kind of crooked, and it does hit his back or this lower dorsal plate here. So just be mindful of that so this way you don't have any paint damage, but uh, yeah. Overall, this Godzilla can move pretty well. I think they could have pushed the envelope a bit more and gotten some more joints out of it, and a better range of movement. But uh, to be honest with you, I think it just works a-okay. Accessories time, and what do we get? Well, you remember that other dusty, sand-battled thing figure release that they did? The uh, 1964 Emergence version Godzilla, which they actually really did the dusty paint job well? Yep, this thing comes with its beam. 
Yep, that's it for accessories. And, uh, well, to be honest with you, this one actually looks like it's a bit whiter instead of a traditional blue for Godzilla's beam, which I guess is in spirit to some of the Showa-era beams, but uh, even still, eh, I don't know, kind of lazy. Could have used a unique beam for this guy, but uh, yeah. Anyway, if you're looking for other effect parts to maybe make this release look a little bit better, you already know that I have a video for you. Oh, and yeah, it does come with the uh, Tamashi Stage Act 4 support system, so uh, he can actually fire the beam off. Yeah, kind of lazy. Anyway, we're going to go ahead and round out the review with a nice size comparison with this Godzilla figure alongside others you just might have, so this way you can determine how much shelf space you need to clear off. And to be honest with you, the size on this guy is great. He's very hefty, and he should fit in well with any 6-inch Godzilla display. Two thumbs up. So buy now, skip, or wait for a deal. We have two sides to this outro. We have the objective, which are things that are good and things that are bad about the figure, and then my own opinion. For the objectives, yes, the figure is sculpted fantastically. However, the eyes are a gamble each time you open this thing up out of the box, and we have two areas on the figure where paint is just simply lacking. The articulation is good, but to be honest with you, I think Bandai could have pushed the envelope a little bit more to get some more range of movement out of all of the joints and better articulation. The accessory that it comes with is uh, recycled from a previously released figure, so to be honest with you, it really doesn't matter here. Is this a $100 figure? Absolutely not. There is a new Godzilla coming out for the King of the Monsters movie that is going to be about 75 bucks at max. Yep, Ben, I pretty much shot themselves in the foot here because uh, this thing is $100. For $25 less, you can get a bulkier Godzilla with an even cooler accessory from the latest and greatest movie, which uh, that design is probably also going to be the one that's going to fight Kong in 2020. That being said, I do like this figure. Yes, I know, shocking. That way, when somebody decides to say, oh, Steven doesn't like anything, <laughs> you're wrong. Yeah, so this figure does have some serious issues. They should have painted the nails. There's no reason why they shouldn't have done that. The teeth, the Monster Arts Godzilla Jr. has a better overall mouth paint job to it, but um, this guy scales well with all of the kaiju figures I already have. He looks great alongside all of them. He blends in well for any display, because I can put him in a few different poses that are rather unique. Yeah. I like this purchase. That being said, though, I still don't think this is a $100 figure. I kind of feel ripped off thinking about how much I paid, but once price is removed from the equation, yeah, I do like what I got. That being said, though, if you are looking for a 1962 Godzilla action figure, if you are not a diehard fan, you might want to see how the NECA turns out. But if you absolutely have to have every single 1962 Godzilla and we're going to rip price away from it all, yeah, you know what? This one ain't too shabby. Well, folks, that's the end of this review. Thanks for watching, and be sure to follow me on social media to catch more behind-the-scenes shenanigans and updates. The end card should be popping up now with more hand-selected SDR goodness for you to watch, so check out some of those videos. Be sure to check the description, too, to see where you can buy this figure or others like it and some cool links, like the credits for this video and other ways you can help out the channel. Thanks again for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.